All right. Uh, so I guess now you understand what the plan was. Absolutely. At Colts Law, we talk Indianapolis Colts football. We're going to stick to what we know, fundamentals and technique, 1% better every day. What's going on, Colts Nation? I'm Lawrence Owen. With me, as usual, is my guy, Colts Loyalist. And today, we're just going to be talking about the training camp that we had uh, visited yesterday. Could have done this earlier, but quite frankly, I've been busy. Okay, I have got like three hours worth of uh, video and stuff to edit and cut. And I recorded it in HD, which makes it stupid, like long time editing and uploading. Like an hour worth of uh, video takes three hours to upload for some stupid reason. Okay, Uh, what's going on, man? Which is um, real quick before I get into anything. I am going to give you guys my Discord link, Colts Law Discord link in the chat. There it is right there. Um, right now, I just uploaded the uncut, unedited version of all of my videos to Patreon. It's up and ready to watch. It happened literally 10 minutes ago. That's why we're not running at 6 o'clock. We're running at 7.15, Okay. Uh, because of the upload took so long, but it's got everything from my intro uh, to freaking uh, watching the cheerleaders to watching training camp, like full video. There's over a half an hour of video straight of the Colts practicing. Okay. Uh, got a big old clip of, of what the uh, the crowd looked like a bunch of people screaming and yelling, go Colts. I got them to scream, go Colts. And then the people behind me down that was doing the radio was like, can you move? Cause this, that's really loud. And I'm like, dude. <laughs> uh, but, and then of course the, uh, the, the media pressers, right now, I got a really good view of the media pressers. I was right front row center, uh, right head on to the guys out there. But, the audio wasn't the best, right? But here's the thing. The great thing about my video is the stuff that was published out there has a bunch of uh, sound like questions that were cut out of the videos. So I got those questions added in also, right? Uh, the extra content. So I will be editing, chopping, and putting out all that stuff later on, uh, probably today. Oh my gosh maybe a little bit tomorrow too just uh, it's it's so much to go through so much to go through but real quick those of you who are not subscribed this week on believe in colts i know this is colts law but on believe in colts we're going to be giving away on one of the episodes there two shirts that my man loyalist got a bunch of signings for. All right. We got two of them that are identical. We got Frank Reich. We got Bobby O. We got Ryan Kelly. We got uh, Jelani Woods right there. And then, of course, Matt Taylor on the back, uh, Van Denmark. Um, two of them, exactly the same. Uh, so they will be given out. Later this week, when I drop that vid, all you got to do is uh, make sure you're a subscriber here to the channel. That's it. All right. Uh, subscribe. And you'll have to watch the video because that video, I will put out a word, a uh, code word. And those that drop the code word in the comments will will be in on the drawing. All right. Uh -huh. All right. So what's going on? Chuck loyalist. What's up, man? How was, uh, how are you doing? I know it was rough yesterday. Oh man. No, I'll tell you what, I, <laughs> real quick before we get into this guys, this, we've been here about five minutes. Make sure you smash that like, hit that subscribe. Also, if you happen to share it on Twitter or any of your other platforms, we'd appreciate it. We'll try to get as many people in here today as we can. Cause I'll tell you what, the training camp was amazing. Colts Nation showed out 
big time. <laughs> I mean, I had, I've gone now five separate years that I've gone to at least one, sometimes, you know, many of the training camps and stuff. I have not ever, ever seen a turnout like this or just, I mean, and the intensity on the field. I honestly felt like that the fans and stuff helped the, the players amp it up because I'll tell you right now, uh, <laughs> it was crowded, but it was definitely well worth the drive. This helped me out a lot. All right. <laughs> get a good look at that right there. All right. That helped out a ton with getting me getting a lot of the, the uh, video that I wanted to get, including my new Believe in Colts intro where I got Cassidy, the Colts cheerleader uh, captain, actually, to uh, do the intro. So that was that was a very, very fun. But let's get into actually what we're here to talk about and that's what we saw yesterday in camp and the biggest piece of information that came out of camp yesterday in my opinion and most other people because i'm sitting here on the field talking with everybody stephen holder and and bowen and and everybody i mean everybody right um Paris Campbell's legit, kid. Mm. Oh, my goodness. Paris Campbell is going to be nat. He's got to stay healthy. But he's legitimately going to take this league by storm if he does. Am I wrong? No, you're not wrong. And I'll be honest with you. I think that you could say that as the wide receiver. I mean, guys, <laughs> these guys are starting to show some of the fruits because it was not an easy day out there. Gilly, Gilly, blah. Gilly Locke was doing his thing, you know. Rogers, it looked like you know every play was a, a audition to make the roster. I mean, this guy was, you know, he, he wasn't a hundred percent successful, but he was electric in some of the plays that he did make yesterday. But like you said, this wide receivers group is really getting tested from the defensive side, and they're showing out well. Like you said, Paris Campbell. I, I sort of want to mention Naheem Hines in this group of guys because he had a spectacular out route that he, you know, I, the coverage was spot on. And Matt Ryan just, I mean, the, you know how we say in the NFL, the window is smaller. This was training camp and that window was already very tiny, but it was an awesome play. You know, and like you say, you, Alec Pierce having some, uh, had a couple of little flashes out there where, you know, I mean, he, he it's not too big for him. You know, he it looks like he's fitting in perfectly. Reggie ought to be real proud of what those guys have been putting on the field. I'll tell you what, two guys that really stood out today. And, and it's funny because the guy that did not stand out today is the guy that everybody's not worried about. And that's Michael Pittman Jr. He didn't stand <laughs> out. Uh, not that there wasn't anything thrown his way or that he was, you know, performed poorly. It's just he performed to what he normally performs to. Ashton Doolin may have had the play of the game or like the whole day game, mm -hmm. uh, the whole day. It was stupid. Good. I mean, my goodness. He, he ran this post route eh, over the 25, 30 yards, right? Matt Ryan zips it across the middle. Coverage was perfect. I mean, perfect. Ryan lays it way out in front of Doolin. Doolin dives Superman style for that sucker and catches it. All right. It was gorgeous. Now, we had a few other nice catches. Uh, there was a beautiful one handed streak uh, Paris Campbell had. There was another catch later on um, down the sideline that was one handed as well. Uh, but yeah, that catch by Doolin was just, oh, man, Reich. And Ballard have been talking about they got a lot of confidence in these boys at wide receiver. And from what I saw yesterday, I, I kind of understand why he has that confidence. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and and like you said, the coverage, it wasn't like the secondary was getting <coughs> blown off. You know what I mean? The, you know, they were really in the hip pocket on a couple of these plays. But yet they still showed the, the focus and the concentration to be able to make it. Absolutely. Uh, I got a lot of. A lot of that practice stuff. I got the one-handed catch that uh, down the sideline that was near, um, not the greatest. Had some people in the way, including a referee. But you did get the view. You see the picture. That was the the thumbnail on this is that picture. And uh, 
like I said, the, the, the ref was in the way, but you could see dude made a heck of a catch. Mm. All right, one-handed down the sideline, good coverage, everything. Uh, the running backs looked really good. They were running a, uh, a a couple drills that I was like, what is this? Uh, one of it looked like a pin the tail on the donkey drill um, where – like there was a ball in the middle with the 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 step overs, um, mm-hmm. and then they do the spin around the ball and then take up stand up and run. I'm oh, like yeah. trying to get dizzy, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but they they uh, honestly the two guys that performed that the best was Philip Lindsay and Naheem Hines. Um, yeah, Lindsay's feet. Lindsay's feet are elite. Them things, man, I'll tell you right now, you have to put a slow motion camera on there just to be able to pick him up sometimes. He's got some quick feet. Yeah, yeah. And and uh, Hines was very, very smooth. Speaking of Hines, I mean, he was out there uh, doing the one-on-one drills, not just with the running backs, but with the wide receivers too, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, he was, he was doing split duty today and looked pretty good doing it. Um, I'm expecting... They talked about it where they're expecting a lot from Hines. Hines is going to be on the field a lot this year. Right? Yeah. I mean, he's, he's going to be thankful that he didn't get as many snaps last year because he needed to save his energy up for the all the extra use he's going to get this year. Mm hmm. Oh, yeah. It's going to get stupid uh, how many snaps he's going to get because I got a feeling he's going to be, you know, part of the two two running back sets. He'll be out there when there's three wide receivers, you know, as like a slot or something like that. He'll do all sorts of stuff out there. Hines is being utilized a lot, but he's not necessarily needed at the wide receiver, as we talked about, because the wide receivers are showing up. And it's not like, you know, you know how we talk about all the time where, you know, one guy looks really good, but he's playing against the threes and the fours. That's not what's what we're discussing here. These corners are flipping who they're covering all day, right? Um, and like Paris was burning everybody, including Rogers. You know, yeah. um, he was I mean, he was smoking them all. Uh, Ashton was doing well against God. Now Pierce, Pierce looked crisp. His route running looked a lot better than I expected. Now. I could probably put that in with Reggie Wayne being out there, right? Uh, being the teacher that he is and and such a connoisseur at the route running uh, tree. So I, I assume we could probably put that on the Reggie Wayne, you know, checklist. Would you maybe? Oh, no, definitely. Because, I mean, like you said, his – First three yards of his route running was something I was paying a close attention to to see what his get off was. How how is he able to get off that coverage and stuff? And like you said, I mean, even he was continuously matched up across from Gilmore. You know what I mean? And I'm telling you right now, Gilly did not make it easy on this rookie at all. You know what I mean? But you, he it wasn't too big for him. He, like I said, he showed some things that I'm like, oh yeah, I can see that. We can work with that. And and that's where I was like saying, you know, Reggie. Reggie had to be sitting there, you know, because I'm sure they film it and go back and digest, you know, training camp as well as they do like practices. And they're probably like, okay, you know, things to work on. It's not perfect, but he's a rookie. But like you said, there is a lot to sit there and digest and be like, oh, I like that. I like that. There was a scare uh, about three quarter way through the the practice um, where Gilmore was covering Moali Cox. That shouldn't happen. Um, but he was, and the throw was over in that general direction. Gilmore Cox, they collided with each other, went down. Mo Alley actually got up first. Gilmore took a while to get up, but Gilmore's the one that got back into the lineup and was in up practicing. Um, maybe five minutes later, he was out there on the field practicing, but Mo Alley Cox is with the trainers. Apparently he's got some kind of a, uh, a ding up knee uh, that's going on right now that he's going to have to deal with. We talk about it all the time. No injuries, please, for training camp. But you're going to have stuff like this occasionally. And from what I'm understanding, it's nothing serious and it shouldn't keep him out long. Yeah, yeah. The coach said that after the the interviews after camp last night, he said that he had sprained it a little bit, but he said it was just the Colts being more precautious than anything and just you know trying to make sure that Something that is minor stays minor, and he gets back out there as quickly as he can. 
Absolutely. I'm going real quick. Um, if any of y'all have any questions, feel free, drop them in the chat. We will get to them as soon as possible. First and foremost, please don't forget smash that like button. As Loyola said earlier, um, smash that. I mean, it helps so much. Uh, make sure you're subscribed. When you hit the notification bell, make sure all notifications are turned on because if not, YouTube's just like, I'm not going to not gonna send it today. Uh, so make sure you don't miss anything because we have so much great stuff coming out um, from here on out. I mean, there's a good a ton, of, ton of content uh, mm -hmm. to get out there. But first and foremost, guys, I want to give a quick, show you guys a real quick peek at the new intro for Believe in Colts that I recorded before training camp started with, yeah, I think this will be interesting. Hi, everybody. I'm Cassidy, one of your Indianapolis Colts cheerleaders, and you're watching the Believe in Colts podcast. Yeah, that's what I got. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, I, I might be adding some more to go with it, uh, maybe next Sunday when we go out next Sunday. Mm. Uh, but, yeah. That's that's going to be fun. Guys, um, also, don't forget, uh, there's a ton, a ton of stuff that you could go uh, check out. Obviously, Depot's my man, and I got this right here from the Backroom Collection. There's a whole bunch of other Colt stuff that is there and available. Just uh, click the link in the description and, you know, get yourself something for your living area or your Colt's cave this channel is proudly sponsored by the backroom collection they do beautiful sports canvas art with football basketball baseball and other sports themes special orders are accepted and autograph pieces are available many indianapolis colt sign pieces will be available beginning in november just use your discount code cl10 to purchase the pieces you want to spice up your living area that's cl10 uh, now, don't forget, uh, like I said at the very beginning of the stream, I have a link to our Discord. Feel free, click on it, join the Discord. We don't just talk Colts there. We talk a bunch of stuff, including gaming and all kinds of stuff, just like Patreon. Patreon gets unedited video uh, and unedited cuts for a bunch of stuff, including today's near hour and a half worth of uncut stuff that I just uploaded right before we went live. And uh, if you guys want to help us out a little bit, uh, whether it be gas money to get back and forth or whatever it is that we're actually needing at the time right then to keep the content coming, feel free. Use the link in the description where it says donations um, right down here. And, you know, we'll definitely appreciate that 110 percent. What's going on, man? What are you what are you thinking right now, Loyalist? Oh, man, I'll tell you. Right. First off. OK, <laughs> like I said, Colts Nation showed out big time last night. And the thing is, is I got to know during the regular week and stuff, it's OK, because if it's if they're on one field or the other, because at training camp, they run two fields. Field one is the left one, field two is the right. I always pick the wrong field to start off. <laughs> Normally not a problem. You know, I can get over to the other side and see. Not last night. You know what I mean? So the thing was, was I didn't get to see a lot of the 11 on 11. I, I seen a lot of the drill work drill work and stuff like that. But what I did get to see was the, for me, the heart of the team, you know, the, the, the trenches and these guys working. And I'll tell you what, man, part of it was because the field's still a little damp from the weather that they've had earlier in the week, but man, these guys were working it. I mean, I, I remember last night, first thing you asked me, what did you think? I'm like, Grover is, is playing every play. Like it's, you know, like it's regular season. I mean, he was really out there. I mean, he, no knock on to Danny Penner, but he had this one play where Danny Penner was just like, okay, we're doing that. You know, and it was, it was awesome. But then, you know, you seen the next play where Danny came back and was like, you know, it wasn't quite the same story, but that the, these guys and the work they were putting on the, on the uh, interior and stuff, I was very impressed because I remember last year, you know, seeing Ben Benogu just, you know, just, eating our tackles up. That was not the case last night. You know what I mean? <laughs> I mean, you could see the effort from Ben, but I'm telling you right now, Pryor was having no part of it. You know what I mean? 
you know, uh, prior wasn't having no part of Yanni unique. I know. And then, and then whenever, uh, Ryman was in there, I mean, I'm telling you what, I was very pleased with what I saw from him being a rookie that, I mean, just the competition. And that's the thing we've talked about it. We talked about, it. but going there and seeing these guys working just, I know I get it. It's just helmets and, and shorts and stuff. I get it. But these guys were not playing it that way at all last night. I mean, Coach Ollie and and and, and the O-line, you know, they were just really battling it out. And I was very impressed with what I saw from these guys on both sides of the ball. Absolutely. Shout out to man, which is what's up. Sarah says she's excited. Me well, too. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Harpoon said that was a crowd. It sure as heck was. Um, how do you feel about the running back group outside of Taylor? I worry that if he gets banged up, uh, that, uh, Hines won't be able to carry the load. Should we look for another cowbell for continuity? I don't think so because we have plenty of running backs back there. Uh, if Taylor does go down, knock on wood, hope it doesn't happen. We have a running back by committee that we could go to after that. All right, um, Lindsey is a, a solid running back. Hines is a solid running back. And we got a couple guys back there uh, that are is eager to make a name for themselves. So I, I, I honestly, I don't think that, you know, uh, that's a situation that's really going to hurt anything. Uh, Harpoon says that, yeah, Lindsey's incredible. Running backs are great. Would you agree that there's not really a big fall off from when we had Mac and Taylor and Hines, which I know we never really got to see it in action. But there's really, as far as depth-wise, there's not a, a big difference from what we had those years to what we have now because, like you said, Lindsey's going to come out. He's got a wealth of, of experience. And, I mean, we saw some plays last night where the ability is definitely still there. We have better depth than when we had when we had Gore and Mack, okay? Mm -hmm. And that was a year where Mack was breaking out and Gore had his 1,000 yards rushing, right? Um, I really think that this is maybe not as deep as last year's, uh, but man, it's close, mm -hmm. man, it is close. So, uh, this is, this is a very good running back groom when it comes to, to depth. What's up JDW. Appreciate you being here, Chaz. What's going on? Um, <laughs> he says, please Paris deep says, please. We're praying for you. Stay healthy. <laughs> That's that's everybody. Everybody mm -hmm. in the entire nation is feeling that way, right? Um, uh, Mr. Popham, will Mike Young make the fifty-three? I'll leave that to you, loyalist. Well, I'll tell you what. If he if he keeps making some of those one hand ca handy catches like he did last night, he's definitely going to be raising an eyebrow. For me, wide receivers. I mean, like you like you said earlier, Ashton Doolin, Paris Campbell. These guys are both playing really well. MPJ is doing what MPJ we expect from him. You know, you sit there and who does it? Uh, you got Naheem Hines, who's going to get some reps in there. Uh, Alec, Not Pier Alec Pierce has, you know, done nothing to sit there and stunt his growth to say that he doesn't deserve to be part of that, you know, group of four and stuff. So, I mean, it's going to be hard. And the thing is, is Michael Young, they have a, the pleasure of Michael Young is also somebody that you could probably put on that practice squad. And, and nest egg away a little bit. So I don't know that he makes the 53, but I definitely don't think that the Colts are willingly going to let him go either. And don't forget, we still got Mike Strahan. Mm -hmm. uh, he ain't practicing right now because he's dealing with uh, an injury himself, but he's looking to make the 53 as well, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah, and you got the Michael Harris and you got Des Patman. I mean, oh, there's the, the, that competition of that. I'm telling you right now, guys, and I don't, I mean, the energy was electric last night, but on the field, the, the the intensity of the battles and stuff, like I said, that to me stood out as a noticeable ramp up from what we had saw pretty much all of training camp last year. Yeah, absolutely. Um, we did get to see four quarterbacks throw, <laughs> four of them. <laughs> um, I'll tell you what, something that I was actually a little bit impressed with is a certain number uh, four quarterback for the Colts had a little bit more zip on his ball than what he had last year. Not a lot, but a little bit. There wasn't, it wasn't, you know, arcing 10 feet up in the air to go five feet in front of him. Mm -hmm. uh, so 
Um, he may have worked on maybe his technique, his throwing technique, to maybe get a little bit more umph on the ball when he gets rid of it. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah, and, and he he still looks beautiful rolling out to his left and just throwing those darts. Yeah. Ellinger, like I said, he, <laughs> but he's got, I mean, he's got an excellent room to be part of. Because the thing I, as far as the quarterbacks, I mean, I, I'll be honest with you. I, I went there fully expecting Matt Ryan to be everything that he was. You know what I mean? Except I didn't expect him to be uh, the opening speaker. Mayday had uh, Jonathan Taylor and, and, and Matt Ryan come in and address the crowd before uh, before practice started. That was kind of cool. But the thing that I was really impressed because I've never seen him throw the football live was Nick Foles. And I mean, th- during the drills, it was like Matt Ryan drops a dime, 25 yards, very next throw, Foles, same route, drops it. And I understand his drills, but the, I mean, just the, the crisp precision of it and stuff. And these receivers, I mean, I'm not talking where, you know, Naheem Hines is overrunning. It has to, you know, let off the gas to make it look. No, I mean, you know, these guys were efficient and and really looked like some of those timing things were already uh, well established. There were some similarities and some very noticeable differences between Nick Foles and Matt Ryan. All right, their delivery of the football looked very similar. Uh, nice art, good spiral, accurate. You know, got decent, you know, power to it. The major difference was how quickly the ball came out, Mm -hmm. right? Foles sat in the pocket for a while before he made a decision. There was a couple times he should have been sacked, right? Matt Ryan goes through his progressions, and inside a count of three, if there's nothing there, dude takes off for a 15, 20-yard run, Mm -hmm. okay? Yes, that's what we were seeing last night. Matt Ryan was ran twice, once for about 15 yards, once for a 20-yard run before anyone ever got close enough to touch him. Okay. And that was that wasn't him. He, he like you could see him. He literally just went through his progressions real quick and then he gone. Gone. He wasn't even waiting. He was like, all right, it's it's time to go. You know? Uh, so I really like that about Matt, where you know, he's making his decisions now. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and and it's I mean in all aspects of it because I mean, you know, the the up tempo that they were talking because I'll be honest, I didn't make it Thursday last week, you know, for Thursday or Wednesday's practice, so I didn't get to experience the up tempo. But last night it was there. I mean, you've seen these guys even in transition. It's like we got to hurry up so we can catch our breath before we start the next rep, and it and it was just boom, 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 <laughs> and yeah, that that up tempo. I mean, I've got to feel like the defense is going. Come on, man. Just get <laughs> let's just take a second here. But that offense, and the thing is, is it's got to be hard for like the wide receivers, you know, and stuff. But I imagine if you're sitting there and you're training this way, what do you think it's going to be like in week 15, 16, 17 of the NFL season when everybody else has uh, got their tongues hanging out? And you're like, oh, we do this every day. No worries. <laughs> right, right. Uh, Harpoon Bakery, what day do the pads go on? Is it August 8th? Now, the pads are, they had some pads on yesterday. Some. They had shoulder pads, but not the chest plates. Okay. Um, and the, the helmets. But from what I'm understanding, and not just helmets, they had all kind of weird stuff on their helmets. They had extra padding everywhere. And then, you know, the special teams had like the red Santa Claus hats on and stuff. So, uh, but from what I'm understanding, tomorrow's practice is full pads. That's, that's what, um, Frank said, um, after he left the, uh, the presser, he was sitting literally three feet to my left. <laughs> All right. Frank Reich was there and he was, he was sitting there talking with the in report. Yes, that's right. Um, Ian Rappaport, it, it was packed. It was a packed training camp. It wasn't just packed with fans. It was packed with media. I mean, national media, local media, didn't matter. I think there was media there from Singapore. Uh, but there was enough people there that it was just difficult to walk around. Okay. But I could hear them over there talking. And I, I, I heard Ian ask about that and, Frank said that uh, Monday was supposed to be full pad. So hopefully that that will happen. 
because the sooner the better, right? Yeah, yeah, and like you said with the media, it was almost like a college game day, or at least, <coughs> at least what I imagined it to be like, because like you said, you had all these guys, and then they had a lot of people that they had bought the ride or whatever, but they get to walk out on the field, whether it was family and stuff. But, I mean, you know, it was just the whole – the day could not have been any better. The weather was awesome. I mean, I got there like 45 minutes early, and – I was just like, oh, no, because there was already at least 1,500 people in front of me. And I was just like, all right, <laughs> it's going to be like this, you know? And I'm like, so I was very pleased with everything. I mean, everything. <laughs> I got there an hour, hour and a half early. And I pull up and I, it, I had to park in the media parking, but out in the grass because all the rest of the media parking was taken up. And the parking lot was full. And I'm like, this is nuts. This is, we didn't see this last year, yeah. right? I mean, th we thought it was pretty full last year. Yesterday was stupid full. Hmm. I mean, they, they, I, I don't, there were people like the stands were completely full and there were still people in Colt City. Yeah. Right. It was, it was busy oh, all the way around. There was people in Colt city. There was people lined all the way up and down the sideline on the other side of the field, both end zones. I mean, <laughs> you know, there was a lot of people that are as excited as we are to, to get our eyes on these guys and see what they really look like. And I'll tell you right now, everything I saw, I mean, I know, you know, Mo Alley tweaked the knee, but if everything's as minor as they said, it, Perfect operation, perfect, you know, perfect day to get 1% better for sure. Oh, yeah, definitely. There were so many fans there that it made up for Washington not having any. Uh, so, <laughs> sadly, Carson Wentz has no one watching him other than his coaches and players. Uh, I think there was like eight people that showed up to the commander's practice. That's, that's so awful. That's so awful. Oh, my goodness. Colts fan, uh, Darius Leonard, Darius Leonard was there. Uh, Shaquille. Shaquille. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Uh, he was there. Uh, there was some people calling him Darius, some people calling him Shaquille. Look, it's his middle name. It's what his family calls him. Apparently, uh, a lot of the players today or yesterday, as I, as I was talking to him, said that they've been talking, calling him between Shaq and Darius off and on, you know, back and forth, uh, ever since they've been there. Right. Yeah. Uh, even Bobby O said that, you know, uh, during the presser that they, they've been calling him Shaq too. So, uh, I mean, it is his middle name. It's his given God given name. It's what his family and friends call him. If he's comfortable enough with everybody to finally be called what his family and friends call him. I'd say that's kind of an honor for him to say, you know what? Call me what everybody that's close to me calls me. You know, that's, that's cool. I, I, I'm good with that. Uh, but Hey, um, okay. So KDC city says I live in uh VA where, uh, Virginia, where the commanders practice at. It's been raining all week. It was raining, uh, for most of the week here in Indy, uh, as well. But except for yesterday, yesterday was freaking gorgeous. It just, crested just below 80 degrees right as practice started it wasn't like those 10 o'clock in the morning starts that we saw last year where you know uh there was uh dew all over the metal seats and then the sun coming up and it becomes like a oven like a sauna yeah, remember that i mean it yes, was sir. so <laughs> awful oh my go through eight bottles of water in a matter of minutes uh, and, and there goes all your money out your wallet. Cause it's like $2 for one. Uh, yeah. and the thing is, is, you know, we sit there, we talk about how they change these times on the practices to help get their clocks ready, you know, with the, uh, with the regular season and stuff. I'll tell you right now, if this is any sample of what we're going to get to see primetime games are, I mean, <laughs> primetime games are going to be a blast this year. Oh Yeah. <laughs> definitely, definitely. And they look what's what's really good is Michael was asked Pittman Jr. We'll get that out there full full name. He was asked had he gotten any throw arounds with Matt Ryan during the offseason beforehand? And he said, Too many I can't count. 
you know, that many. He's I'm, I'm not going to go into how many because I can't remember how many. There was a lot, right? And it shows, not just with Michael, but with all the all the receivers. The this right now looks so much more clean and crisp than what I've seen ever at a Colts training camp. All right. And I've been going like, like you, I've been going to camp for a long time. Right. Mm-hmm. Back, even back when they were holding them in the Anderson. Right. Yeah, um, my first one was <laughs> yeah. Anderson. The Anderson was literally right. My backyard. Uh, I lived. My backyard was the fence to uh, Anderson college. And all I did was jump the fence and walk in <laughs> and watch, watch practice. Um, it's not but, like that anymore now is it brother no. <laughs> two, two hour drive and it's like hey we're there <laughs> right now it now it takes forever for me to get there um but hey you know uh still still fun um i got some interesting thing i'm gonna start getting this set up to where uh my desk and stuff so you can see some of my other stuff like i got i got this got this little tv my daughter bought this for me. Oh wow! Did that she is, rec- did she recognize it was a TV as young as she is? Because uh, <laughs> that, that is definitely one of the models that might have been around in my day. <laughs> right, that was my that was what my gra- our grandparents had. You know, the console TVs that sat in the middle of the. Yeah, but um, I'm starting to to gather up a little bit of memorabilia. But those shirts. Again, those shirts are will be given out uh, on the Believe in Colts podcast this later this week. Um, so you'll have to watch it in order to be entered into it. So, but thirty-two, we got oh, thirty-seven minutes in. We got thirty-two people watching. Appreciate each and every one of you. Again, smash that like button. Uh, is there anything else that you want to discuss? It looks like the 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 chat's kind of slowed down a little bit before we get out of here. No, like I said, I mean, you know, we. <laughs> If this for me was my introductory to this year, you know what I mean? To see what this team looks like. And I was, I left after I got home. It was like, man, it stunk. And it was such a late game because I got home around 11 and everybody else is asleep. And I'm like, come on, I want to tell somebody about it and stuff. But yeah. This, last this- year, last year we had issues where, you know, walking out worrying about position groups, mm-hmm. right? Like quarterback, like offensive line. You know, things like that, even the receiving room, because people didn't seem to be getting open. I'm not having that. Are you? No, not at all. Not at all. Like you said, I uh, I just the confidence and, and I know I went in feeling more confident. I'll be honest. You know, what I mean, so that the perception was already there. But to sit there and know that you everything you saw, I mean, I'm going to pull this up real quick where, you know, he, JDW is like, how about Bobby? The best thing I can say about Bobby O with Shaq not being in there last night was you didn't notice him missing and, I, and i'm not trying to downplay Shaq at all but i'm just saying the the linebackers looked like they were ready to go that they, they looked like they were on top i mean there was some wins and losses that so you're going to get that but like i said i didn't see a big drop off and that that competition i mean we've been talking about it and talking about it but seeing it and feeling it i mean it is real I don't know nothing about that. Now, if that's something that's been out in media since yesterday, it's probably why I haven't seen it because I've been too busy to really be on social media at all or look at reports because I have my own reports that I was dealing with. So I apologize. Uh, But maybe um, I'll have to look into that. Uh, But guys, I appreciate all of you. What did the wide receiver did enough to prove that we don't need to sign another? We just talked about it, KDC City. Uh, earlier in the show, uh, everybody was making ridiculously good plays. Paris Campbell was open. It seemed like every play. Uh, Ashton Doolin made maybe the best catch of the night, uh, followed by Paris Campbell. Uh, who? Thomas, uh, young UDFA yeah. out of uh, mm-hmm. Cincinnati. He 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 made a gorgeous one handed. I, I it was in uh, it was in drills, but it's still. I was just like that was. I mean, if that throw would have just been just a little bit more, it'd have been incomplete. Absolutely. Uh, they they all looked really good. Okay, so real quick. Yes. 
early in practice, Kylan Granson was struggling. Uh, he had a couple drops. He had a couple issues. The second half of practice, he cleaned that up. Okay. So he started off slow yesterday during practice. And the second half, he finished off strong. So maybe he's turning a point. I don't know. Maybe it was just a daily thing. I know that um, he had that issue earlier in the week as well as reports. Mm -hmm. But he did finish the night off, I think, catching the last three. Uh, One of them was a contested. Like the dude was all over his back and he still caught it and went down. And and I was like, wow, that was actually pretty impressive. (laughs) Yeah. And the only thing, Kyle, and like you said, you've seen that improvement, but the thing is, is, you know, he's got to be watching what, you know, what we saw from Woods and he's got to be going, okay, <laughs> this young man's after my spot for sure. Which is great. I mean, hopefully that'll motivate him and get him pumped up and, and hopefully he won't end up sounding like your cat going, no, no. <laughs> yep. All right, guys. Appreciate each and every one of you. Yes, you heard a cat, JDW, two cats. I got my two males up here that were fighting at each other, and I picked up my bottle of headache medicine and threw it at them. They're not screaming at each other no more. Um, I didn't hit them. I just got them to quit right. screaming at each other. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Appreciate each and every one of you. Again, as we get out of here, I keep an eye on the channel. Make sure you get, because I got a lot to upload today and tomorrow, okay? And I'm working on it right now. Make sure you don't miss the Patreon stuff. If you're not a member of Patreon, use the link in the description. If you want to help us get back and forth to to training camp and get some stuff signed for more giveaways, like we're doing, like I said, when I said I have two, I have two exactly the same one. Thank you, loyalists. Appreciate that to give away this week. With uh, big names on there. Um, absolutely, man. Absolutely. It was it was great seeing you, man. It was it was actually really cool seeing a lot of a lot of the guys over there in the uh the media center, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, there was quite a few people in there that I got to meet. I missed the first part of training camp because I was busy talking with Stephen Holder and setting up a time to do uh, uh him joining us. Um, and then I realized and then we got off on a tangent and stuff. And then I was like, crap, where'd everybody? Oh, look at the time. I got to go. And he said, I'll be out there in a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, final words. No, like I said, guys, uh, I got to reiterate that $5 patrons well worth the value. I know how tight money is. Trust me, I know. But it's definitely well worth the value. Lawrence is going to be putting in a ton of stuff out there and stuff. We're going to be hitting training camp almost every day or do the best that we can and uh not nah, just you know make sure you smash that like button hit that subscribe help us get our word out to everybody else all right guys absolutely and i went ahead and dropped the link to the discord one more time at the end of this thank you guys so so much for coming in um make sure you give us a follow on twitter um obviously you see his twitter line right there I'm Colts Law, so it's pretty easy to find that as well. Until next time, I'm Lawrence Owen. That's Colts Loyalist, and as usual, have a good one. Just because a guy's a player is not a household name doesn't mean we can't make him a household name. I fully believe in what Reich and Ballard are saying about these receivers. After what I saw yesterday, these boys are really good. They just needed a chance to shine. They didn't have a chance to shine last year between the fact that they didn't get a lot of playing time because of the guys that were there and the fact that, you know, uh, some of them were hurt. And then the quarterback that was there, But now they got a good coach, great coach, maybe the best coach, and playing time to earn that experience. Keep an eye on these boys. Have a good one.